Without doubt, the universe has been expanding since the Big Bang, but it is by no means clear that it will continue to expand forever. If there is less than a certain amount of matter in the universe, then the mutual gravitation of the receding galaxies will be insufficient to stop the expansion, and the universe will run away forever. But if there is more matter than we can see, hidden away in black holes, say, or in hot but invisible gas between the galaxies, then the universe holds together and partakes of a very Indian succession of cycles, expansion followed by contraction, cosmos upon cosmos, universes without end. If we live in such an oscillating universe, then the Big Bang is not the creation of the cosmos, but merely the end of the previous cycle, the destruction of the last incarnation of the cosmos. Now the standard model was based on the assumptions of homogeneity and isotropy. In the 1960s and 70s, some cosmologists suggested that by denying homogeneity and isotropy in the universe, one might be able to craft an oscillating model of the universe and thus avert the absolute beginning predicted by the standard model. If the internal gravitational pull of the mass of the universe were able to overcome the force of the expansion, then the expansion could be reversed into a cosmic contraction, a sort of cosmic big crunch. Now, if the universe were not homogeneous and isotropic, then the uh, collapsing universe might not coalesce at a point, but the material contents of the universe might pass one another by. So the universe would appear to bounce back uh, from the contraction into a new expansion phase. If this process could be repeated indefinitely, then the beginning of the universe uh, might be uh, avoided. And thus, on the oscillating model of the universe, uh, we see that the universe is sort of like a concertina, expanding and contracting from eternity. Now, such a theory is extraordinarily speculative, but again, there were metaphysical motivations for adopting this model. The prospects of the oscillating universe were severely dimmed in 1970, however, by Roger Penrose and Stephen Hawking's formulation of the singularity theorems which bear their names. The theorems disclose that under very generalized conditions, an initial cosmological singularity is inevitable, even for inhomogeneous and non-isotropic universes. Reflecting on the impact of this discovery, Hawking notes that the Hawking-Penrose singularity theorems, and I quote, led to the abandonment of attempts, mainly by the Russians, to argue that there was a previous contracting phase and a non-singular bounce into expansion. Instead, he says, almost everyone now believes that the universe and time itself had a beginning at the Big Bang, end quote. Despite the fact that no space-time trajectory can be extended through a singularity, the oscillating model nevertheless exhibited a stubborn persistence. But three further strikes were lodged against it. Uh, summarizing, first, there are no known physics which would cause a collapsing universe to bounce back to a new expansion. Secondly, um, the observational evidence indicated that the mean mass density of the universe was simply insufficient to generate enough gravitational attraction to halt and reverse the expansion. Indeed, the most recent discovery suggests that the expansion is actually accelerating rather than decelerating. And thirdly, the thermodynamic properties of an oscillating model turned out to imply the very beginning of the universe that its proponents sought to avoid. Looking back, uh, quantum cosmologist Christopher Isham muses, perhaps the best argument in favor of the thesis that the Big Bang supports theism is the obvious unease with which it is greeted by some atheist physicists. At times, this has led to scientific ideas such as 
continuous creation, that is the steady state theory, or an oscillating universe being advanced with a tenacity which so exceeds their intrinsic worth that one can only suspect the operation of psychological forces lying very much deeper than the usual academic desire of a theorist to support his or her theory. The oscillating model drew its life from its avoidance of an absolute beginning of the universe. But once other models became available claiming to offer the same benefit, the oscillating model sank into oblivion under the weight of its own deficiencies. This scenario was proposed by Einstein himself in 1930. Can it be true? Almost certainly not, for several reasons. In the first place, it was shown many decades ago by the theoretical physicist Richard C. Tolman that in such a bouncing universe, the cycles grow longer and longer because of the increase of entropy. That means they were shorter and shorter the farther one looks back into the past, and in such a way that the total duration of all past cycles added together was finite. That is, even in the bouncing universe scenario, the universe had a beginning. Second, um, these, uh, these models have some problems, which were first pointed out by Tolman in, in the 1930s. Uh, what he pointed out was that, okay, if the universe goes through cycles, and suppose these cycles, cycles are more or less periodic, uh, then in each cycle, according to the second law, the entropy should grow. And so inevitably, the universe will reach the state of maximum entropy, and uh, then that's uh, where it will stay. And so this model, uh, cyclic model, is certainly in contradiction with observations. Third. It is highly doubtful that a collapsing universe would bounce rather than simply ending in a crunch. In order to go through an infinite series of cycles to arrive at today would require infinitely precise fine-tuning of the universe uh, to exhibit that kind of a behavior. So it would fairly throw you into the fine-tuning argument of Rodney Holder. Did you want to comment at all on that yeah, anymore? Uh, again, just briefly, yes, I mean, that is a problem. The, 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 the um, initial entropy of the universe uh, is, is a problem because uh, this universe started off highly ordered. And, uh, if you have a big crunch, there's an asymmetry because you go to a highly disordered universe. So your next bounce is, is highly disordered, even if you've got a finite universe which is um, you know, expanding and contracting anyway rather than an infinite one. So. Uh, all kinds of problems associated with the cyclic universe model um, th uh, uh, in, in that form at any rate. There are no known physics which would cause a collapsing universe to bounce back to a new expansion. And fourth, it was discovered in 1998 that the expansion of the universe is currently speeding up. The universe is not only expanding, if you look at that galaxy it's moving away, if you come back a billion years later and look at it again, it will be moving away faster. Individual galaxies are speeding away from us faster and faster, so we say the universe is accelerating. This has crucial implications for what the universe is going to do in the future. For one thing, the universe will expand forever. The universe is just going to keep expanding forever and ever and ever. So it is doubtful that the expansion will reverse and lead to a collapse at all.